Oh. Okay, Michael, here we are. Is it already sweet for today? I haven't seen one of these for a long time. No, indeed. Neither have I. Can Nor I put my papers you... on there? Do you need that? No, I need this little bit here, this yeah. left hand okay. side. I'm not too worried about that. So, up what there. we've got is we've got four. What, we got? what are we making today? Are these digi beaters or are they? No, they're beta SP. Beta, beta SP. Yeah. So, this is a story about the man who. The man who. Um, so, we've got four tapes. Right. Um, and it's about, is it Shepperton Studios? Ah, close to me. Yeah, in studios. Um, that's an interview with Louis Gilbert. Um, interview with Roy Bolting, Betty Box. Um, Tony Havelock. I just wonder if there's any establishers. Well, let's have a, yeah. Let's stick one in and have a look, see what yeah. we've got. Exteriors, oh. this looks like something. Which one shall I put yeah, it in? Put it in player one. Yes, so we've is. got a tape with a control track on it, and we're going to start this edit at 10.02.00.00 in time code terms. We'll have a look what we've got. So on, what, what so. we would norm, normally do is go through all the material and start looking for some of the stuff. So if, this, if we're going to start at the beginning of the film, we'd want some sort of establishers. So the first thing that comes up, that, is, that does look like an exterior of something. We play it, it through. Be the end of the tape, I don't know. We'll rewind it. I'm not sure. Player one. Is it in remote? Yes. I don't think seem to be wanting to go anywhere at the moment. We'll try the one. It's player one, isn't it? I think so. Error 03. Oh dear, that's not good, is it? Is it? Okay, we've got an error. error. Error 03. 03. Let's eject Where's it. Eject, Let's eject the blue one there. Oh, it's in, I know why. I know why that is because all the all the commands are operable. Let's try that. Oh, it doesn't work either. I think it's jammed in there. Oh dear. 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 Well, Did I do something do wrong? Switch the machine off. So that that still That's works. The idea of switching on and off again. I don't know. We'll see in a minute. It might do. That's, that sounds hopeful. Okay, so what was wrong awesome. with that tape? A bit of a problem there with this tape. I'm not sure what it is. Let's. Uh... No, that. This is. What's that? Is it? No, that's not a good tape. That one. Should we try one of the other we'll have ones? To take that one. We'll have to do the same again. Oh dear, what's the problem? Yes, yeah, seems to be a bit of a problem so with this tape, so I've switched the machine off, switched it, switched it back on again. Age old way of getting things to work. Let's eject that tape and try another one. I don't know what's there, that's not good news if that doesn't work, we'll have to change machines. Just make sure we get the right tape back in the right box, because that's a, a recipe for disaster in the future if you get the wrong tape. So I've got a try. feeling this machine is, doesn't like... What have we got here? Let's We'll that. I want, let's, let's try Louis Gilbert, who okay. died last week. Right. Uh, Interview with Louis Gilbert. Slightly oh. better. There he is. Yes. Yes, absolutely. They, but I think they... They, you see, the one of the problems in England, we so never take it to the beginning. So what, one, one way of going about this, if you were coming to it cold um, as a film, would be to actually go through all the, um, the interviews. I don't know whether really, the rushes, particularly the interviews, because it's going to be a factual led show uh, and pick out, um, you know, the best bits that are going to help you with the story. Um, and if I was making this film, which is about someone who ran a studio in England, apparently was a bit notoriously bullying man, I would, I would try and find some little sync bits um, from each of the interviewees to sort of tease up in a, in a, in a beginning sequence. Um, so this is Lewis, Lewis Gilbert, who was an amazing film director. Um, 
as I say, died fairly recently, but he worked in the film industry way, from way, way back. Please, he gave her some money, because that's what he's doing, isn't it? It's very dim. It's a bit... That's very, is that... It's very dim. It's, it's either been, it's it's either been very... shot by the Prince of Darkness or it is yeah, dim. Or it is dim. I'm not yeah. sure what video control we have on this machine. Obviously, these machines, you can adjust yeah. the video levels on them. Um, not sure what MOBA in here. I think one of the things that, um, in this sort of era of tape, I mean, I came from, I was trained in the film cutting room, dim, um, which was one of the sort of first, I suppose it was the original non-linear editing system. Basically, you could cut film up, put it on a bin, you could organise it, and you could randomly select stuff. Whereas with tape, you were always, um, always at the mercy of the tape itself. You couldn't cut it up, basically. Um, it was purely, it was a purely linear form. Um, so, so on film, we would have physically taken the pieces of the interview out that we wanted and hung them on a bin, and I would have logged them. Um, so in a way, that was my, that was my, that was kind of my process when I went to tape. So I'd, so I found out where things were. Um, well, what? So the idea is that Michael will tell me what he wants in his film, and I hopefully will make the machines arrive at the right place at the right time. So we've got the first and you will, bit of... you will argue with me occasionally. Certainly not, would <laughs> I ever. Um, no, I could put, I can put a view, the editor always puts a view forward because sometimes he's right and sometimes more than, yes. more than often he's wrong. Mm -hmm. but, so if we say that was the, the first thing... The thing to do is always admit when the editor's been right. That's well, the... a very interesting character, John Davis, because as you probably know, he had two sides to him really. Do you want the good side first or the bad side? Maybe I should give you the good side first. We'll go for the bad side. The good side of John. So we, we shuttle should, along, see should, if we get to the back. Yeah. yeah. Should we leave a little gap at the front in yeah. case we find an establishing shot? To put, yes, we, yes, we, I we think. Could, or we'd leave five seconds at the front. Yeah. Just to put that in later if we find yeah. one, if we get to take that place. Him. He was a tremendous man of his word. So I would go through, when we're looking for a piece to mark, I, I carry on marking. Marking, it doesn't do any harm. I can just mark a sentence. Your signature was just a word from him which said, OK, that's a deal. And that was a remarkable uh, thing. So I would mark... In those days. He was also... So I would mark, he was also, I've just marked that. Pocket, it doesn't matter, it's not going to... It's not permanent, I can overwrite it. Because the, the bank organisation was very well run from that... From that just film. doing that so it is, we have a reference. I can go back to that point now. I can find that he was, he was also, I can go back there and it's how many seconds ago now? It's 10 seconds ago now. And I know it's stored in the machine. So if, if Michael says that's the bit we want, just hit the mark in yeah, and go to. The go to button will take it back to that point. But what I can also do is use lots of different bits of this controller, I can mark an out. I don't necessarily mean it as an out, but it just means that it's another method of storing some, something else. So I can, I've got one sentence in there. I'm listening for another one. That was his stock in trade, actually. But he, that's about the good side of him. So right, now we're going to hit the bad side. The bad side was his treatment of people who So I've now marked, I've overwritten the previous in with a new in. He, he had the philosophy that he paid very, very well. And it's that in will, will take me back to the beginning I, I of that sentence, actually, which was I the bad side. Him. I came in by the picture, I was a freelance mm. director. So he treated me very well. But people who were close to him, he was very, very difficult. In fact, almost sadistic, I'd say. Because one, we had the head of the studio was a man called Earl St. John. I mean, that's a really... He was quite uh, a lovely man then when I was quite a young That's man. a really nice bit where he sort of says he, um, he was sadistic. Uh, John Davis. Uh, well, if I was, if I was, yeah, if I was, if I was putting together a little opening yeah, teaser yeah, sequence, yeah. I would take something like that out. Uh, so we can hook yeah, the okay, we'll do that. Anyway, so, shall we go back for the, yeah. the bad side? Let's go for back for the bad so side. I just stop the machine. So I've now got an in and an out. The out is irrelevant because it's uh, it's before the in. So I can, uh, if I can remember, set out and get rid of that. So I cleared that one away. So if I now go to the mark that I've put in. And it'll wind itself back and then we'll find it more accurately on the jog button. So I can hear the sound in jog mode. 
So that's the bad, the bad side. So we're going to start there, but we're going to leave a little gap at the front for five second gap. Will yeah. that be okay? Yeah, five seconds. I think okay. We'll so if I go to my recorder now, and I've already got in my in time, as I said, of ten o two double o double o, but I'm going to um, take that time, store it down in the scratch pad, and I'm going to add five seconds to that. And then I'm going to set that back in again. So that gives me now a time for this edit of 10.02.05.00. So that's where we're going to start. It's going to be a cut edit. So I... Cut. <laughs> it's going to be a cut when the button plays bull. It's been bullied, that cut button, no, a lot. It's not working, is it? No, it's not going to cut. It doesn't want to cut. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Well, one way to go about this, I mean, if you... Uh, as I, I used to work in a company that, um, you know, I was expected to do other things. Um, sit, sitting in the sitting in the edit all the time with the editor was 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 deemed to be not a useful uh, use of my time. So you had to be. Yeah, if I was making now. a film, I had to be pretty well prepared. And um, so before I got to this stage, I would have had transcripts made of all these interviews. And I'd have gone through them and marked up the transcripts and found the bits, these little bits that we're looking for now. And I would kind of make a scheme for the editor so that actually the editor could work on the film without me being there. And I mean, in, in, this goes way, way back in the history of making films, um, feature films. I mean, uh, people like Alfred Hitchcock used to rigorously storyboard all his films so that, you know, the editor could basically get on with it. And um, and so that's what I would have done. I would have done, a, I would have done you at least half the film so that I could have delivered you. I'd come in and I'd talk to you about it and then I would leave you alone and then we'd come back to it. Yes, absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, uh, you have to, editors have certain skills in some directions and uh, it would, might be a waste of the producer's time to actually be here because he's got other things to do. So if he trusts his editor, the editor will get on and do a re to his idea and we come back and talk about it. Yeah. And if it, that's not good, we remake it mm. or whatever. Now I've persuaded the machine to uh, to do a cut, oh. so I've done a vision. Yeah. We're going to do a vision, an audio one, and an audio two, with two two usable soundtracks on the DigiBeater. So I've got my in time for the recorder. I've got my in time for the player, and there's a big button here called Preview. So if I hit that Preview button, hopefully the two machines will wind back yeah. and uh, present present to us at the edit time. So we're looking at the big monitor now for the previewed edit. The sound is faded up. The bad side. And there we go, the bad side. So that looked pretty good to me. What do you think, Michael? Yeah. So we stop the machine and then we hit the big red button, which will record that. And uh, So we're now committed. We're now committing. Our, we're, no, not necessarily. We can always overwrite it. We yeah. can start somewhere else. We can make two edits, one, one further down the, the tape. The bad side was his treatment. Of people um, who do with a bit more volume. Close to him or under contract to him. So I'm now recording the sound on two soundtracks. So he treated so me very well. On solo one. But it's not people going to both who were close to him, he was very, very difficult. In fact, almost sadistic. So I'd come out to I say. The head of the studio was a man. So hit the hit the record button again, and that stops. That terminates that edit and stores it. If we want to go back to see what we've done, there's a backspace button. We go back and we can look at that edit. It was 10.02.05.00, and we terminated at 10.02.35.14, with a duration of 30 seconds and 14 frames. So that's committed to the tape, stored in the edit controller. So I don't want to do that's edit number eight. So that last edit, which I've just gone back to, it started at 10.02.05.00 and terminated at 10.02.35.14. So we laid down 30 seconds of material for that edit. Now this was edit number eight, and that was the first edit of our little sequence, but I don't want to do that again because we've done that one already. So I just go return on the controller. That brings me to a new edit. Now it's done what a, a thing called tagged, tagged the player. So if I was to hit the red button again now, it would pick up exactly where we were and hopefully do an invisible edit. So we could just carry on doing exactly what we did. But we know we stopped. We stopped for a reason because we don't want any more of this particular quote. We're looking for a new one. So what we do, we go back to the player and we try to find another little bit of, um, another little quote and then we'll find out where we're gonna come out 
on the recorder side. Yeah, let's look at look look for one more quote from Lewis. Okay, I'll, if I can remember to eject cassette. Okay, I should bring a cassette out. Right. Okay. I just need to remember where you put it with the box, and yeah. you take the new one and. Yeah. Offer let's look at Betty Box because apparently she had a lot of trouble with this okay. man. I'll do. Put it in. You have to be very careful with these machines. That doesn't feel good, actually. It doesn't feel doesn't good it? at all. Not happy. No, no, it's not good. It doesn't feel good. Go on here, but that's that box there. Well, I think that it's, it's interesting. If you were like me, and I'm sorry to mention film, I was brought up on film and I shot film for many years with crews. And, you know, film's a very, very expensive medium to shoot. And um, you kind of had to know what you were doing on the shoot. And... Um, because you just burn through your ratio. And we made a series of films for uh, Channel 4 called The Classics. They were half hour films about classic trains, classic motorcycles, classic homes. And they were all shot on 16 millimeter film. Um, and we had 30 rolls of film, so that's 30 times 10 minutes. I can't work that out in my, in my head. But um, so you really had to kind of think about your shooting ratio. And in my company now, I'm still the person who shoots less than anybody else because I won't shoot things that I know I'm, I know I'm not going to use. Well, they would say, well, he doesn't know that he's not going to use it, but I'm pretty sure when I, you know. And particularly with interviews, sometimes we would, uh, on film, you know, you'd start, the, <laughs> you would start the sound, but not the camera um, because, you know, the sound was cheap, but um, the film wasn't. And then you would nudge the cameraman when the interviewee said something interesting. With tape, I mean, you know, the idea of ratios and things kind of went out the window slightly because, you know, tape was relatively cheap and um, you could just let it rumble on. Um, and, um, you know, there were cameramen around who didn't really know where the stop button was. So, you know, you just had to be, be mindful of that. Because obviously the more tape you got into the cutting room, the more material you got, into, the longer it was going to take you to edit. Exactly. And the mm. more, uh, well, the more edi editors' work there was, which yeah. I suppose from my point of view is a good thing, but from the programme's point of view, possibly not. Yeah. So we've got a bit of... Well, I think also, you know, um, part of it, if you're making documentaries or factual material, part of it is knowing what your story is going to be and always being aware of that what you're trying to generate all the time are story elements. So, you know, you're looking... Everything has a beginning, a middle and end. So if you're shooting, if you're making a shot, it has a beginning, a middle and an end. If you're doing an interview or a question, you're trying to get a beginning, a middle and an end out of your interviewee. Um, so my way of going about it was that, basically everything I shot had to have a beginning, a middle and an end. Because it's some, it, it may be that that is going to be the beginning of your film and one bit of it may be the end of your film. And certainly you're going to need the end of sequences and the beginning of another sequence. So you kind of look for things that are going to uh, help you form the narrative of the piece. So this tape was actually <coughs> parked at the end, so I'm now winding it back to the front. We'll see if we can find the next bit of One sink. of the nice things about tape was the thinking time. Yes. In that's... Rewind. Gives or... you time to think about. If you're stuck for ideas, at least you have the rewind time. To... <laughs> this was a big problem in two-inch days. Obviously, it took... A, well, I say obviously. It wasn't not necessarily obvious. It could take up to five minutes to rewind a 90 minute tape and because 90 minutes tapes were so prone to standing up when you change direction of the spooling to keep the tape pristine we used to wind them right to the end and then right back so you've got a clean wind on the tape otherwise when somebody picked the tape up and squeezed it you could damage the edge and the edge damage on a two inch tape was a potential disaster it could rip the tape in half cassette a lot of that went away. One inch was fairly similar. There was still damage you could do, but it was a lot more robust than two inch. Cassette tape, in theory, it looks after itself, but you still have to be careful with the way you look at them. They don't like dirt in them. You have to be careful, as we've seen, putting mm. them in and out of the machine. Sometimes they don't like a particular tape because it's got a bit of damage on the plastic or something. Mm. Um, so although much more robust, um, cassette tapes easier quicker to rewind the uh, especially when you come on to later machines they re rewind really really fast but 
that was all to change, of course, when we were using a disk server as a source of tape. So there was the thinking time disappeared. <laughs> the time code, which was three hours away, hit the go-to button, it was there straight away. So yeah. that was not good news for us, but very good news for the producer. I, mean, I think the other thing about tape and you know cameras that um, use tape and <coughs> machines, of course, they, 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 they do wear out because they're mechanical, they're man mechanical transport devices. And I think one of the things about the new um, you know, digital cameras is, of course, there's less moving parts in them. I don't think there's any moving parts, is there? Really? I mean, really? Uh, which is an advantage, so theoretically they should well, last, uh, they should last forever. <laughs> I would like to... We're looking to now I would like to say that it, it was a benevolent... Another part. contributor? Yeah. Uh, uh, this uh, is Roy Bolton. But honesty compels me to say the very opposite. It was a, a determining one, that's a certainty. And uh, with the power he had at his disposal, I mean, with the cinema... We're really looking for another bit where... Little, where yeah. Little yeah. And so on. He says he's a bully. Uh, he was in a position to dictate. And uh, being authoritarian by nature, by temperament, by impulse, um, I think you can say he was a number one man. He was the Caligula of That's the cinematic... That's right. He was the Caligula, cinematic. yeah. So I'm shuttling now. You can hear the sound, perhaps. I'm shut. Man, there's man. There's a gap, and there's he was, he was, he, hey, he, he. Shuttle there till I find the start market. So that's the in for the new chunk, and we'll go back to the recorder now and find where when we've had enough of the first little bit. So we go back to ten o two. We'd probably put. We'd probably have some rostrum material here, wouldn't we? We'd have a shot of this guy they're talking about and we'd do a yeah. kind of slow movement yeah. on his face. Because he, he had the philosophy that he paid very, very well, these people who were surrounded. So we're looking I, for an out now. Actually, under contract to him, I came in by the picture. I was a freelance director. So he treated me very well. But people who were close to him he was very, well. very, very difficult. In fact, almost sadistic, I'd say. I, I really want the sadistic, sadistic actually. Yeah. Okay, Hidden so that's 32 there. seconds. Yeah. There. yeah. So I've marked the in for the new piece. I've marked the out from the old piece. Again, A1, A2. I'm not quite sure what's going on here. but So yeah. we're, again, we'll have a preview and see whether I've got that anything like right. Up. But people who were close to him, he was... Very, very difficult. In fact, almost sadistic, I'd say. He was the Caligula of <laughs> the cinema. So, to my yeah. mind, yeah. the out was a little bit loose, so yeah. I would take a couple of frames off that. I mean, there's one little directing point here for nascent um, factual directors that this director who's ever done it has done the right thing by Most swapping short. sides. Yeah, um, so, the, so um, one, one interview is looking left to right and one of them is looking right to left. So, in effect, they're kind of talking into each other which is the kind of, I think that's the idea of it. It's a it convention. Is. Yeah, yeah, that's, you can often, if that doesn't work, you often swap quotes around to get, to get that yeah. sequence to work. Close to him, he was very, very difficult. In fact, almost sadistic, I'd say. He was the Caligula. Right, I'm of happy with that. The cinematic. So we go for that yeah. one. Very good. But people who were close to him, he was, very, very difficult. In fact, almost sadistic, I'd say. He was the Caligula of the cinematic, cinematic industry. Yeah. The, the tea term that's, I beg your pardon. <laughs> the cinematic, cinematic industry, so. yeah. <laughs> he might say that again, of course. Um, he might go yes. for that again. We could have a look. <laughs> <laughs> so I've made... Now made edit number two, and that's stored away in the yeah. machine. But we'll just see if there's just a little better bit. See if you can do it again. And we've got a nice yes, tighter, good. There much be, tighter shot then. now. Yes, yes. Oh yeah. So that's the director, quite rightly, saying, could he put the name of the person that we're talking about in his answer? I, I would. Um, I would say that uh, John Davis really was, what could term him, the Caligula of the 
cinema. Fantastic. So he did so that even better the second time, so, yeah. Okay, so yeah. We, we think that take is better than the first take. So what we'll do now is we'll, we can go back to the previous edit. Um, I can remember to do it, uh, which is backspace. So I can go back and look at the previous edit, which was uh, in at uh, 10.02.32. That, that's where that edit started. I can actually um, st recall that time. It's amazing that you can remember how to do all this. So I can, I've, I've, I've plucked the time code of that previous edit from the recorder. I'm now going back to the new edit. So the time for that last edit is stored on the screen there, and I'm going to set that now as the in for this new edit, which is replacing the old edit, if you see what I mean. So then the new in time with the tight one, I think I put that in, 10.02.19. The, the interesting thing about that idea of asking people to repeat, I don't know whether I'm supposed to say this, but the idea of getting someone to put the subject of your question in their answer, I mean, the jury's sort of a bit out on that. I think in certain circumstances, this guy's amazing, you know, sort of ex-public school boy, he's, he's done public speaking, he can do anything for you. I think if you were in certain situations, I would never, ever ask someone to do that. Because um, what you find is that sometimes people start in the middle of a sentence if they come around to it, uh, and then they'll, then they'll begin the sentence again. So you'll get the name or you can edit it around. So if you're interviewing someone, a mother who's just lost a son in a motorcycle accident, you don't muck around trying to get them to, you know, put the subject of your question in the answer. It is written. So to pre we've got two buttons here, the two main operating buttons for making edits. One is called preview and one is record. And the record is the actual that is going to put the machine into record at the required point. The preview is what it says, preview, you're going to preview, you're going to have a look, see if you like it, if you don't like it, you can make adjustments. If you do the edit, it's more difficult later to make adjustments. So hopefully I hit preview and we'll see what happens. Nothing at the moment, absolutely nothing. It's stopped working. We've got error. Oh, we've got an error again. Error number two. The player is, that, is error, a different error this time. Another thing I could be doing while Ross is doing all this is if, if the piece had a commentary, um, I would be madly scratching away on a piece of paper, the commentary. And so after these, maybe there's going to be maybe three bits of these sync where we get the idea this guy's a tyrannical boss. Um, we would then have a pause for some shots of him, maybe some archive material of him, some music. And I would, normally, there would be a microphone in this cutting room, and I would read a scratch commentary um, in time so that Ross could measure that time. We could go back later and drop the rostrum pictures in or whatever. Um, no, it's not playing ball with this machine. Yeah, what, what I would normally do is, um, while Ross is um, making the edits and scrolling things backwards and forwards, I'd be writing what we call a scratch commentary, which is basically a rough commentary. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is because we know that there's going to be some, I'm going to have to guide the story somehow. So, uh, and after this first bit of the film, where we're going to get three or, three or four bits of sync, where we get the idea that this guy's a bit of a tyrannical boss, that will lead us into this next bit, where we sort of expound the story slightly. And we'll mention this guy's name. His name is John Davis. Um, in the 1950s, Pinewood Studios was run by John Davis. To some, he was a tyrannical boss. To others, he was a genius. So it'd be something like that. Um, and then you'd probably come back to Lewis Gilbert and he was saying, actually, he was kind of good, but um, we hated him, you know. The journalism is quite instinctive, Well, yes, yeah. <laughs> I think, um, I mean, some people shy away from commentary these days, and it's it's a little bit sad because it's a little it's a skill in its own right, really, um, and it's very economical. Um, if you need to get if you need to say something quickly, or if you need to turn a page in the story, if you need to move things on, if you need to condense a lot of information, um, being able to write a commentary, being able to write is a really good skill. So I would say to any student of film, read, 
read as much as you can, because if you read more, you'll become a better writer. And once you've been reading more, try and write stuff. That's, you know, never shy away from it. Just, you know, start it. Because sometimes you go into, as an executive producer, I've gone into cutting rooms and they say, oh, well, there's going to be some commentary there. And you think, well, yeah, what is it, though? I mean, I want to know what the commentary is. What is the story? And um, I've actually been in viewings with um, younger directors when the, you know, the commissioning editor comes in from Channel 4 or BBC or whatever, and they, they try and wing the, the, the viewing like that, the first viewing, by saying, oh, we're going to have some intro introductory commentary here. It's going to say something like this. And then, you know, and it's a disaster because basically the confidence of the commissioning editor is shattered immediately. And what, what then happens is the commissioning editor comes out of the cutting room and collars someone like me and says, write his fucking commentary for him, you know, or help him do it. For goodness sake, we need to get it sorted out. Um, so, read and write. Uh, other words are available. Other words are available. <laughs> lost, OK, yeah. so, what's, so what's happened here is we're having a bit of trouble with player one. So what I've done is I've taken the tape out of player one and I've put it in player two. And I'm able, by this button called back in here on the controller, I'm able to pluck the time that I entered on player one and then set it into player two. So that you can access all these time codes within the um, edit controller and juggle them about and put them where you like. So that's, I don't have to go look for the clip again because I've done that already. So I've plucked it out of player one and I've planted it into player two. So hopefully now we'll have a little preview and we'll see what happens this time. Let's see if player to play his ball. But Sick people one. who were close to him, he was hopefully very, that's, very difficult. Hopefully that's fact, the sound. Sadistic, I'd say. I, I would say that uh, John Davis really was... Good for me? Yeah. Yeah. So that, we're happy with that, so we'll hit the red button there. So that's the oh. edit button called record. But people who so the machine's now synchronising again, joining those two frames fact, together. Sadistic. I would say that uh, John Davis really was what could term him the Caligula of the cinema. Full stop. I think I'd stop there. Come out there. I'm not going to call yep. it an industry. So Michael said he's had enough. I'm going to keep going a little yeah. bit longer just in case there's a bit of atmosphere that I might need to hang over the next bit of sync mm. or next shot, something like that. Always, always better to take a little bit more than you think you need because if you need to add it later, it's more difficult. So what we can do now is, if I can remember how to do it, is replay that edit. So there's a little button here called replay. And I think if I remember correctly, that will go back, pre-roll the exact same time. And it also brings the edit up on the screen that you're looking at. He was very, very difficult. In fact, almost sadistic, I'd say. I, I would say that, uh, so there, that's Davis reviewed our really edit, was. and it's shown me here that we what recorded 15 seconds worth of this man, but of we don't want to go to the end. We want to find a new out for him, so... Cinema. Of the cinema. Caligula of the cinema? Mm. I'm not going to call it an yep. industry. Yeah. Okay. So, so we've now got two bits down, so we're now mm. looking for another bit. Now, whether we need another presenter or what? Well, what, you, what we could do here, just to show, is that yeah. we could, we could. this is where we put a bit of commentary in, where later yep. we're going to yep. paste in some yep. rostrum footage. Okay. One little trick for commentary writers is, um, is his last word Caligula? Uh, I think so. I'm not going to call it a minister. So one of, one of the little tricks of commentary writing is you pick up a word off what the, the yes. sync interview is Cinema. said. Cinema. Cinema. But he said Caligula before. of the Cinema. So the VO would start then uh, something like, for many, John Davis was the Caligula was. of in, Cinema. Yeah. Because he has actually said that, yeah. hasn't he? Yeah. Was the Caligula of cinema. Um, but in 1950, he was running Pinewood Studios and it was a business, something like that. So, so then we would look for another piece. So there are two ways we could do that. We could either leave a gap for that piece of commentary. Or I could read it in new time. Or it. you could read it, but and we could lay down a shot and that and that may, may be the way to do it. Yeah. We need to find 
an exterior. Oh, a shot. I think our exteriors. Exteriors were on the tape that wouldn't play, aren't they? Yeah. Um, uh, mm. uh, it's not that one, I don't, uh, We could no, go back one. to Louis Gilbert, because he was talking... He talked about, actually, he might have been a bit of a, a swine. Do, do, do we not look... Wasn't there a shot of the exterior of the building? There was an extra, but wasn't that on the shot on the thing that wouldn't play? It may have been actually, yeah. Uh, Louis, that Gilbert? Louis Gilbert. That's Louis Gilbert. Yeah, that's, well, let's, um, let's, let's take it out. This this has got GVs on it. Oh right, okay. But I'm not is sure if that, that wasn't that the one that wouldn't well, play. Well, if it stalls, it stalls. Yeah. Real trouble. No, Real it's not going to work, is it? Real it's trouble. not going to work. This, this machine is not going to work. Anything else has got anything? I'll have to put it in that's there. That's bolting again. That's, that's, one the, take, that's the, the one we just used, so yeah. that needs to go back in its box. That was... Uh, this is Roy Bolting and Betty yeah, box, so that's take, it. That's keep that. Yeah, we, on, what we on. would what we would do now is find some GVs. Find some By GVs. G, GVs is a very old um, cinema term for general views. Um, so it could be exteriors of the sign of Pinewood Studios. Um, it could be archive material, not GVs, but it could be archive material that we cut to next. Oh, we've got something here. Look. Not sure whether this is fine, yeah. Six. Do you want me to read it? It's too long anyway, isn't that one really? Mm. That one's too long really. Let's yeah. dim a bit of sound there. See if there's anything else that's more general. Do you think that's Pinewood Studios? Mm, I seem to remember Shepperton had some know. fancy buildings like that, but I don't know about I don't I never, went to Pinewood. I don't know, I yeah. never never been, although I live near Shepperton Studios. Oh, mm. how long's that shot? No, it's not very interesting though, is it? These are general views. Um of an exterior. It's, it might be where the interview's taken place with Mr. Bolton. Um, but that would that maybe do for the time being. Should we do it as an example? Is this the still? Yeah, a still one. There is, there is a moment to... So we've got five seconds, don't forget, at the front. We've got yeah. to paste in for something. Yeah. But that's a bit too long, isn't it? So I think... Yeah. Should we put this one at the front still and then look yes. for another one? Yeah. So I mark that. So I can shuttle this quite quickly on this shuttle and you just get used to driving this shuttle knob. So this is going to go before the first bit of interview, yeah. is that right? So yeah. we're going to go first frame of that shot. Now, <coughs> we left five seconds gap at the front, if you remember, for this, um, for this wide shot to establish it. So this is going to be a vision only shot because eventually somebody might put some music on it. So we're mm. going to try and get rid of... <laughs> Could we try and do something fancy and overlay the beginning of... Uh, Lewis interview yeah, we, over we that shot. We could try that, yeah, we could try that. So if I go back to that very first edit, which I'm going backspace now, this button backspace through the edit list, the edit list now is going backwards, and I come to 10.02.05, that was the first edit we actually did, but our piece was going to start at 10.02.00.00, um, 10 10 so... Uh, Edit seven, edit eight, ten oh five was that one. So if I go back in, return that, one, return this thing, put it into setting, take off five seconds. So we know that, and, and then the, I can go uh, pl uh, back in. There's all sorts of tricks you can manoeuvre these time codes around. Take it, add five seconds to it with the plus button. Take five seconds off. Uh, type it in and set it in. All sorts of ways you can get to the. Same result, plus... It might be worth saying, if you're a director or a producer, it is an enormous relief to have an editor who knows how to do all this stuff. Who can basically make, make your vision of the film or the piece happen. I would have last done this for, in anger in 2007. Mm. Um, in fact, driving one of these very same controllers, and I did that on a ski Sunday World Championship in Sweden um, after I'd retired so before that I was using one of these every day as I was working so it there is a certain amount stuck in me head certain amount I can't I'm t obviously taking a little bit of time to find all the all the buttons and what I could do but you, they really are very clever machines and with a bit of 
manipulation and juggling between this and the vision mixer, you really can produce very professional results. I know on non-linear, which everybody went to when I was working, people would come out and say, this is marvellous, but you can do a lot on these with a bit of thought and with the use of pre-read, which will allow you, allows you to multi-layer on the same tape. Now that is a big, um, that was a big innovation for us. Um, whether we can show that later, I don't know. But so now course. we've got, we've got the in time for our uh, edit, which is 10.02.00. And I've come out a second after we started the first quote. So we've overlaid a bit of uh, sound underneath that. So I've obviously done vision only because we don't want to wipe the sound of the man we put down. So we've got an in for the wide shot. And uh, we got an in and an out for the recorder. So we've got two times now. We've got an in and an out, six second duration. Do the preview. We always do a preview when you're doing something like this in case you get it wrong. Hopefully. Quite good maths as well, you? Well, it helps, yeah. Helps you play darts, I guess. <laughs> so we'd now perhaps have a little bit of music coming up. Um, nine, two, da 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 da. A bit of music here, perhaps. And then three, four. The bad side was his treatment. So we've come, we've come out after the bad side. Now I would want to come out between those, personally I would want to come out between those two. The bad side was cut. That, that's what I would want to do. Yeah. So I would go there, the gap between was and his, and I would mark that new out. Well it's 10 frames different, so it's not a lot, but it's just, to my mind, something I would like to do. So mm -hmm. we can rehearse that again. It's called refinement. It's refinement, uh, but if we were on the air in an hour, we wouldn't bother to pre just yeah. do it. Yeah. And you'd have to trust that what you've done is correct. Blah, 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 music, music, music. The bad side was his treatment of people. Okay, so I'm happy with that. <laughs> so we Very hit the good. red button again. Yes, it's, uh, it's remarkable actually that even after all the time I've been away from the industry. The bad side was his treatment of... I guess it's a bit like riding a bike. I mean, it, it's, there's so much of it after 40 years editing mm. stuck in my head that even the old uh, dementia or whatever it is <laughs> doesn't make a way. So we've, we've got the opening shot on now. We can just check that that's there. That's stuck. That's good. So we had another shot to go in at the end of... Uh, the Caligula The other piece. Caligula by. Yeah was, what could term him, the Caligula of the cinema. I'm going to swear the woman. So what I'd do after I'd sort of done my rough commentary, cinema. I would get Ross here to um, basically, write, he would cue me and say now. Yeah, we'll, we'll find a shot. Yeah. Let's go for another wide shot. Let's not hang about too long. Let's get something different than that. Something yeah. a bit more interesting. Any more? Oh, yeah, well, is a that tree, gonna work? A bit of a tree? Oh, that might be work. Yeah. That a bit of a left to right pan. That might work. So we mark that. One, two, three. A bit slow. Four, five, six. Very slow. Seven seconds. Is that too long? I think it'll be. Shall I try it? Shall yeah, I read okay, one? We'll try that. Yeah. So we'll just put, rehearse that as a vision only. So I've got. Lined up the uh, incoming wide angle, and I've got an out point for the quote, and we're just going to preview again. And, then, and I'll read it, shall and, I? So, yeah. yeah. If I can remember. Really was what could term him the Caligula of the cinema. Q. For many, John Davis was the Caligula of the cinema, the but in the 1950s, he was running Pinewood Studios, and it was a business. Something like that. So what we did there was I cued Michael, Michael read the script as it would be. So to get the timing right, there's a little button here called Mark Constant. And I hit that button on the player, from the player, and that stored the time that um, when Michael had finished his voiceover. So I know now that that is the duration on the player of that little piece of action. So I can now use that, otherwise I'm gonna have to, we're gonna have to do it all, all again. Um, so it's just another little trick where you can grab time codes from various parts of the tape from various players or recorder and actually use it um, for your, to save you time later. So if I set that as the out, that time I marked, that gives me a, a drop in of that shot of nine seconds. 
effectively. So because we're in a bit of a hurry, should we just do that? Mm -hmm. well, we've got a little bit of an issue with the sound here because you, there was a tail of the sound going out which we need to get rid of. And if I can get that yeah, here, sorry. we might be able to uh, try and get rid of that sound if everything's working here. So I could do that. And I'm going to preview it again to make sure I can fade that sound out. So I've now just selected one audio track and I'm using the other audio track which has got this, should have the same audio. Sorry? One could turn him. So I'm going to do this one. We, we've got some hangover sound from the last sync quote which we don't want. So I'm going to fade that out or even mix it in with some incoming sound effects from the wide angle which might be quite a nice bit of bird twittering. So to do that I'm using the second audio track as a bounce track. So I'm going to copy from the second audio track up to the first one and then fade it out. That's the theory. I'm going to hit the preview because I don't like doing things like this, Oliver. Uh, John Davis, so, not John Davis really was, one could term him, the Caligula of the cinema. Okay, I'm happy with that. Yeah. Right, so hope, hopefully you heard there that the Caligula of the cinema and then we heard some incoming effects. That's because I'm using track two as an, as an edit source on my recorder and I'm only recording on track one. So I've got A1 selected and the vision. So I'm now going to hit the button because I'm happy with that. And then I'm going to so mix in know. some of the audio from the incoming really was tape. What could turn him? The Caligula of the cinema. So that's where my commentary goes. And that's laid in the right duration of piece mm. with some effects, got rid of the outgoing sound. So now we have something we can start to work with here. Mm. That's almost. quite interesting. I'd quite, quite like to make the film now. <laughs> <laughs> I retired 12 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, let's have a look at what we've done, shall we? Yeah. Let's just make yeah, good pass idea. Some, a few comments on perhaps something we might need to do. So here we go. Well, I think it probably needs a bit of music, music, yeah. music there. So just to the set it. The bad side was his treatment of people who were close to him or under quiet, isn't he? Yeah. Because he, he had the philosophy that he paid very, very well, these people who were surrounded. I, I was never actually under contract to him. I came in by the picture. I was a freelance director. So he treated me very well. But people who were close to him, he was very, very difficult. In fact, almost sadistic, I'd say. I, I would say that uh, John Davis really was there's a slight what sound imbalance yeah. there because the um, we need to line the mix the up a bit better. Cinema. So this is where the commentary. So this would be the way the voiceover goes. Yeah, I think what's interesting is even with and what we've we done there, four cuts, three cuts, four cuts, you, you you get the sense of a narrative already forming, and that's what actually that's what's lovely about making programs. You find little bits of narrative stuff, and you you, you know, I mean, I know I knew nothing about this material. But already there's a sort of thesis building with just a couple of bits of interview and some cutaways and some simply written commentary. And, um, you know, it's fun. Yeah, I mean, the idea of bouncing words is, is great. The idea you use a, use a word that's in a sync piece of vision and use the same word in your voiceover or a similar word or the same meaning word joins, stitches it all together. It, it's you either emphasize the same word in a different way it's quite quite an art of writing mm -hmm. and performing those words and get getting everything yeah. in the right yes. uh, i'm not quite sure what the word is um timbre i think is the word yeah. getting getting things in the right timbre that that make you not yeah. jar by a cut yeah. but it, oh yes it all flows nicely I together i think what you try and do is um what i try to do is listen to listen to great commentary readers so um, you know, listen to Attenborough. I mean, I mean, actually, the, the way those commentaries are written, they're beautifully written commentaries. Yes. Um, but the way he delivers them as well, you know, you can, you're, you're, you're never going to be Attenborough, but at least for the yeah. purposes of the theatrical showing to your executive producer, it's going to sound like something like it is in the final thing. Well, in my world of sport, I, I would listen to Gerald Sinstadt, who was a great writer of words Terrific, and yeah. learnt a lot from listening to what he had to say yeah. and also listening to people that couldn't do it and then you'd have the suggestions to make when they were stressed <laughs> out on a Friday night trying to think of some words for a football focus story <laughs> you would use the Gerald Sinstatism and 
offer that as a as a mm. suggestion. I mean, some people would take it, some people wouldn't. But mm. I learned a lot from listening to people like that. Yeah. Um, and, and it's something that I've been quite interested in since I yeah. stopped editing, actually, is using words in the right context. Mm. And, th and those presenters like Sinstunt, who was a great writer. He was a wordsmith. Um, we yeah, call him a wordsmith. A really terrific writer. Yeah, yeah. And of course, he's putting something of himself onto it. It's, yes. He's authoring it. It's part of authoring the piece. And, uh, and I've always thought, when I've had to write commentary, it's a chance for me to say things that actually maybe aren't on the film, but that I saw or I sensed. So, um, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, a, it's a, a skill. And a great voice helps. I mean, if you the likes of Eddie Butler, the, the rugby commentator, who's a very good at... A, he's Welsh, got a fantastic voice, but he can he can make words to pictures and a warmth and a glow. Great writer. Mm. Wish I could write, wish I could think of words like that. But he, he's another guy, great guy I've worked with over the years. Well, talking about editing and time of television. I mean, starting. I mean, I go You're back more than me. I think two-inch days back in the late sixties. I mean, I would have made simple programs like Play School, which is. 15 minute program with perhaps two or three cut edits in it. So that's a, the way I started editing, going on to making a drama, say that's a 90 minute show and that would in those days, that would take two days. I mean, nowadays it would be a lot longer, but in those days it didn't, studio time was expensive. I mean, using one of these, I started using one of these in 1980, mid 80s, I guess, started using these on Ski Sunday when we had the little stories coming in. So you'd make 10 minutes a day, 12 minutes. Yeah, 12 minutes a day was, was good making a story, a broadcastable story. Um, That's good. Doing a, a football match on a Wednesday night, you'd do the first half and that edit could be 25 minutes long. So you'd knock that out in an hour and a half um, because you had to, because mm. you had to get on the air. Mm. Um, so it was always needs must. You have to get, you have to make as much as the time you've got left. So you've only got the time up to transmission to get it done. So you've just got to cut your, cut your cloth, get on with it. If you've got time, you stop and twiddle about. But yeah, everything I did post 85 would have been on an edit controller. So I would have done thousands of hours of television on one of these things. Me, not as much, no, no not, nearly as, not nearly as much as that, but I spent a lot of time in cutting rooms. I suppose the difference is with making documentaries. The, the first editor I ever worked with was a film editor, it was a wonderful editor called Charles Davis, and I still work with him actually. He, he, for him, editing was making movies and it was all about subplots and teases and telling the story and keeping the audience with you. So a lot of what I did in the cutting room was about that. And it was either using the commentary or the way that we shifted sequences around, put the end at the beginning and the beginning. So there was, it was a slightly different sort of editing, but that, I mean, I'm incredibly impressed about that. 12 and a half minutes, you know, is, is, that's, that's a lot. That's a lot of work. That, most of that came with, I mean, what you were alluding to earlier is actually log, what we call logging, which is looking at material. Now, very good producer friend of mine, Graham Wellham, used to tell all his new trainees, if you're tired of logging, you're tired of life. Because if you did not log a football match and you did not know <laughs> where the salient points were, there is no way you could get it on the air. Yeah. So logging in sports department was fantastic. It was reams and reams of very, some people could do it shorthand, mm. but every single piece of, every goal kick, every foul was logged. And then as you go, star, star, three stars, goal, yes. right, that's got to go in because if you muck it up, you look fairly silly with a 4-3 football mm. match if you've only got six yeah. goals in it. You do look really stupid and you're in big trouble. So logging, knowing what your material is, is absolutely crucial when it comes to making any sort yeah. of television, I think. And you wouldn't um, have had a life because you've been spending your whole life in a small dark room. Indeed, I did spend my life in a small dark room <laughs> for 40 years, yes.